Right, day two of our inner city golf. This one's Hags Castle. It's literally across the road, really, from Pollock Golf Club that we played yesterday. It's 7 a.m., sun will be up, guaranteed, within half an hour. Just played into the first, it's a par five. We're on in regulation. The sun will be with us in five minutes. Life couldn't be any better. Or maybe if the oldest birdie it will be. Stay out of the bunkers. Let's go in. We're away on three. Finding fairways, you know. Fourth hole is a par five. It plays 467 off the yellows, which is where you just see me tee off from. But it's a real interesting hole. I had a feeling it was a par five, even though I'm on the white dot, which is 200 yards in, as the kind of crow flies. So it's, uh, I don't think I've hit a drive 267. But what it means is you've got a real risk and reward situation where if you just move slightly to the right, you should be able to see the flag through the gap. So we've got two logics here, either go straight down, which in my case, I'm only hitting a wedge, or we're gonna go over the uh, angle of the dog leg and have a bit of a pop at it. The next dilemma we've got is uh, I haven't got the iron in the bag. I've got pretty much half a, half a bag with me. No more excuses. We're gonna hit a bit of a cutty five wood, I'm afraid because I don't think I'll get there with a six iron, which is the longest iron I've got in the bag. I've pulled it left, not cut it at all. And we'll go and see where that one is. I think it's safe, it bounced, but I didn't get any cut on it and uh, not very committed in terms of that swing. But do you know what we've played? four holes three and a half holes in and uh, again i did it yesterday first impressions immaculately kept loads of green staff out busy uh, beavering away around here greens have been really really uh, rich in color they look superb first of all loads of patterns on them again first cut second cut on the rough it really is a tidy looking um parkland course and again a bit similar to again i'm going to refer to yesterday strategy required to sort of weave your way around this place so uh yeah, impressed again. Well, we might have seen it bounce, but bounced and finished into a bunker. And uh, in terms of yardage, it wasn't too bad. Not the best to lie in the bunker. Well, as you can see, got that a little bit heavy and uh, I've done far better than it should have done, really. Right, one noticeable feature, got ourselves to the eighth hole. And again, what I'm looking at is, uh, is a dog leg from right to left. Hopefully, a bit of drone footage to assist my, uh, my interpretation of this hole. But like I said, only playing, we're gonna play it off the white at 320. And the diagram that I'm seeing is uh, on, on the tee box, a sharp right to left, pin tucked away, can't see any sort of green at this stage. And again, that's been a key feature on, I think probably four out of eight holes we've played 
par fours with movement from right to left. Um, and really all about positioning, as I say, 320, not overly long. I haven't lasered those uh, bunkers, but I'm gonna try and hit something around 180. It's very tight off the tee. Oh, that's bang down the middle. And I think, yeah, pretty much what I played for. Looking at it, probably could have got a little bit more in terms of yardage out there, gone with a bit of a longer iron. Unfortunately, the longest iron I've got me back today is a six iron. Um, but again, really interesting shape. And it's all about, obviously with those dog legs, it's about positioning. And it's about positioning on the right side of the fairway. But more importantly, I suppose, just finding the fairway to start with. I reckon we could have probably gotten another 20 yards out uh, in terms of the club that I selected, but that would have meant uh, it narrows up and the bunkers come into play. As it stands, we've got 140 in and the flag is tucked way left, as you'd have seen from the drone footage. So I reckon a decent play. A little bit right of target. That's quite a bit right of target, actually. And I'm not sure there's quite enough club there. We're in and around the fringe anyway. Yeah, I came up short, as ever, lazy golfer that I am, didn't get uh, the range finder out. And that uh, pin is tucked way back, probably another, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 yards back from centre. We've got a long chip and run, but a lovely little golf hole in there. I just said sort of off camera that, you know, it's a 320 yard par four, really well shaped in terms of, like I said, uh, strategically where you need to be and asking questions of the club selection off the tee and then when you're playing your iron in you've got sort of three uh, staggered bunkers in terms of distance so yeah, really good really good 320 yards and I bet it causes all kinds of problem on a Saturday medal comp anyway shut up and then chase out chase out go on ball go on ball Ah, that's quite decent, you know. It's got to go. Well, we got there in the end. Wasn't uh, perfectly played, but what a great little golf hole that is. Again, I don't know if you can pick up on the camera now, a bit more light coming in, but the greens are so lush in the colour, and I mentioned earlier, nicely cut. We've seen them uh, being hand mowed throughout this uh, early morning start, and they look and play really well. Well done, Hags. Well, we just finished playing on eight, a real short par four dog leg, and I've put the camera back on because nine is another dog leg, and you can see from the drone footage going over for you now, quite severe. We've got a tree right in the middle of the fairway. That's our first thing we've got to overcome in terms of uh, finding some short stuff and making sure we're not blocked out. And you can see the movement in the, again, left to right in terms of where that's, uh, where we're trying to get to, our end goal. I have measured the tree out at 213. I'm gonna go for the tree with driver and pray. I think I've got that bang on. Just about kept me balanced. That is absolutely. Oh, and that's pretty much position A, I reckon. You know, I reckon you do need to play Hags Castle to fully sort of understand your positioning, because again, that wasn't driver off the tee. Yeah, I sort of got away with it, but you also find there's a burn just, whatever, five yards away from where I finished up. So without doubt, the position is get something short of that tree, which should enough get, should give you a fairly short iron in anyway. Um, so like most courses, uh, far better if you've played them before. But as it stands, we're in really good nick. See if we can make the most of it. That's right on it, you know. This could be good. Oh. No, underclubbed. I say underclubbed, it's, uh, it's short, I'd take it all day long, but I thought that was literally going to drop down it. I took a pretty much easy half swing, and I clearly I could have hit that thing.
do you know what? Look, it's unreal, you know. I have literally, I have hit a uh, pretty much center stripe of the fairway all day long with my driver. And yet when I got an iron in my hand, I'm absolutely garbage. This game just cracks me up. I, I seriously, I don't think it's been a long time since I've actually drove the ball this good. I don't think I've hardly missed a fairway. And I mean in the middle of it and long, everything's been working. And then you get there and the irons just ain't working today. This game's crazy. It's right at it, you know. I don't think there's enough legs from here. Go. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd almost got there. Uh, par five finishes on 18. We started with a par five. Don't forget, we're finished with one. Uh, not far off in two there. I'll have a chip and uh, hopefully a putt for birdie to finish. I think if I was doing a kind of like overall summary of the course, you've seen it's extremely well kept. There's been great definition on fairways, first cut, second cut. Generosity in terms of the fairways. And I will say it's uh, it's tight in places. And I've, again, without repeating it too much strategically, you've got to plot your way around a little bit more. Not overly long, I think, from the yellows, it plays around 6,000 yards. So that tells you that it's more about um, strategy, club selection, rather than all-out power. But really, really well kept. What you can hear just over in the distance is when you come back to the clubhouse, you hear a little bit of that traffic noise, which tells you just how close you are to the, uh, to the motorway. And uh, as I say, just a couple of miles away from the city centre. So for Inner City Golf Episode 2, I think both here and Pollock really ideal. If you want to mix it up in terms of spending a little bit time, a bit of time in the town centres, a few nights out, and then some golf very nearby the following day, these two places are pretty much uh, ideal for it. They really are. So we're going to see if I can chip and make a birdie to finish. I think. <laughs> 